Hey guys, listen, um, lately I have been feeling the Lord tell me to empty out. That's what I'm going to do now. Um, I've been honest in my videos. Every video I make is honest, 100% me. Um, but these videos coming up are going to be something that's uh, out of the ordinary for me, but it's truth, and uh, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to disable all comments anyway because it really doesn't matter. To me about any kind of comments um, I have to put out what the Lord's putting on me that is why this um, video is going to be New World Order dream I had this dream over two years ago it's still as vivid as the moment I woke up from it it is something that I know the Lord has given me I've had other dreams since about re-education camps and people being detained and things like this I'm going to put this dream out there for right now the stream goes like this. Um, I was in this building, a two-story building in the woods, in the middle of the forest. Like uh, There was one road in and out. And um, basically, we were all there. The people there were under the impression that we're just there for like a week or two. Something had happened in public, out in society that... For whatever reason, we were we were in this place, okay? We were given some kind of, um, I guess, some explanation where people bought the explanation. So, anyway, we're in this place. Now, I come through the uh, main lobby because I was staying up top in the far corner in a room with my family. Now, I came down through the, the grand staircase. I had a big grand staircase that came down and feathered out. So, I come down and I go out front. Now, you could still move around this place at this time um, you couldn't leave the premises but you could walk around you were free to walk around and uh, I walked out front and above me was a blue sky now off to my right over the tree line all I could see was the most devastating sky the most scary sky you could ever imagine it looked like it was just layered like six different layers of horrible like wretched sky you couldn't even imagine um, lightning going sideways it was blacker than black it was just the scariest thing and it looked like death itself it looked like whatever this sky covers dies it, it didn't look like life could exist underneath of this sky so I go back inside into the lobby of this place and I go I go a couple feet into my left hand side there's like a receptionist window there because this place had medical staff so I nod to the lady behind there and now I go in through the doctor's doors for some reason. Now, you know, regular civilians weren't allowed in there. But I go back in there and, you know, I just like put on a serious face and walk with intent like I know what I'm doing. I'm supposed to be there. And a few doctors come like to, um, you know, to approach me saying, what are you doing here? But I just got this real, you know, hard look on like I, I don't even want to be bothered. And, and they leave me alone. They don't say anything. So I get to the back room. And uh, I hear two doctors discussing something, and they say, we're under quarantine now. And, um, you know, nobody can come in or out anymore. This place is on lockdown, this and that. So now I turn and head right back for the door I just came in. When I come out back into the lobby now, that big grand staircase that I told you about, okay, there's military men like every fourth step. Loaded to the gills with guns and everything. Machine guns, they have the masks on sunglasses and things and um, they're basically ushering people down the left side of this stairwell and they're going down this tunnel well you know hallway towards this door so they're quarantined and you understand when you look at these people they have sores and boils all over them their face their arms a lot of them are bent over okay like if you were standing up to just bend over with your arms out because they can't breathe they're panicking and they're being ushered like cattle. Um, the military men that were doing this had absolutely no remorse. It was a total disconnect. It was as if you were not even human. Now, as I come out, I see this. And I'm running past these people looking in their eyes. And it's just death in their eyes. They just know they're, going to, they're not going to make it. I get up the steps and towards the top of the steps, there's a woman who's reaching out for a man. She grabs him by the sleeve. And um, this is in between two of the officers. She reached out to grab her husband. Now, instantly, I'm aware that they've been married for 40 years. 40 years of marriage. She reaches out. She's got boils all over her face. She reaches out to him, 
and he hits her off of him in an instant because he's petrified that she will give him what she has and he knows that if he gets that he's going to be with her going where she's going now just stop for a second and think of this 40 years of marriage 40 years of living with someone every day of your life sleeping waking up together all this stuff and in their most fearful moment of their life ever they're reaching out to you for help and you just hit them off them like they've never meant anything to you that is the fear of the situation I'm just trying to explain that to you this man was totally just worried about his self did not care that's how panicked all this is and it was very fast everything was moving very fast so that is why I was still able to walk around because this had just started to take place because when I came out of that doctor's office I looked at the front doors where I was just at and there was military vehicles there now people standing there just loaded to the hilt with guns you know you're not coming out of there so I, go, I run up past this guy and his wife and I head off to the left because my room is back in that corner I go through the double doors there where people are being ushered so these people are being ushered right past me I'm running right past them and behind them military men and um, when I get through the double doors I look over and there's two of my children and they are bent over as I'm you know telling you bent over like this and I'm looking at them saying stand up stand up this isn't real you know this this is just in your mind you know I'm figuring maybe they did some type of mind control on these people and I really didn't know what to think I looked and I seen my kids and they were going, Dad, I can't breathe. Now, as a father, you do anything in the world for your kids. You die for them in a second. Now I'm looking at them and I can't help them. They can't breathe. So I'm trying to grab them. I realize whatever has happened to the rest of these people, something's happened to my children also. Um, at this point, they just couldn't breathe. I didn't see boils on them, but... It was instantly, I was instantly aware that whatever has happened was done either by a shot or some kind of nasal spray. So these people at some point were talked into or forced into or whatever it is, taking a shot from a needle or a nasal spray. And this was the result. So I'm trying to get my kids, I'm trying to grab them and get them to the back room there so I can get them out of the window down to the, you know, grass and uh, and get them into the woods and pray and ask God to remove everything that's happened to them, right? So I'm trying to grab them and and these, you know, mil this just then this military guy comes through that double door and goes to grab him and I'm pulling and he just hit me with the butt of his gun until I can't hold on any longer. And uh, I like have to watch my children being taken out of this double door and they're looking at me and they're panicked and and then I catch the last sight of them as they just disappear into the herd of people who are being ushered. Now, to give you, you know, a rundown of this feeling. Now, I just told you that a man who was married for 40 years hit his wife off of him as though he never knew her. Now you have kids, young children who just seen their dad beaten down with the butt of a gun. They can't breathe. Um, they're being ushered like cattle. Everything is new. They're in this place where it's not home. They were in this building. I mean, I'm just saying, it, it couldn't be any more fearful, okay, of an environment for children. So this is a father who's going through my heart, the pain of what they have to feel, the fear that they have. My heart's just melting, you know, thinking about it. And it's at that moment, as I just catch the last of their eyes, and now I cannot see them anymore. Everything just stopped. Um, even now I'm like out of breath saying this because I'm reliving it but everything just stopped and I heard the Lord's voice crystal clear say do you trust me and I said yes Lord I didn't hesitate I didn't say anything so in the midst of my worst moment there was no if ands or buts do I trust the Lord yes Lord I trust you and he said then you're gonna have to trust that I'm going to take care of your children and I instantly knew that I won't see them again on this earth. That that was it. That was the last time I see them with my eyes on this earth. He told me that um, I need you to preach in prison. I need you to 
bring what I've done for you to prison. So I instantly knew I will be in prison and I will be sharing the word of the Lord, you know, in prison. And that my mission wasn't complete yet. But see, the, the thing is this, as fathers, even as parents, you know, you think when you're with your children that they're protected and all these things, and, and, and they are in a way, right? But the ultimate protection is God anyway. So when you drop your kids off somewhere and they're playing somewhere, I mean, really, God's watching over them, not us. I mean, we could hold our kids as tight as possible and God could take their breath. And we can't do a thing about it. So the lesson, there's a bunch of lessons in this, but the lesson, one of the major ones for me was that I have to trust God. And I have to trust. I know how loving he is, how merciful he is. I have to know that no matter what happens to my kids, he's going to ease their heart and take them just in the manner that he wishes to. And that I have to trust in that. And that I had to keep on going to fulfill whatever my mission was here. I'm telling this dream because I have felt led to empty myself. If I um, feel other things coming, then I will let you know. But it is at this point so far right now that uh, it's time to get out. A lot of the things that I know that I haven't spoke of. So I wanted to share that dream with you guys. I absolutely believe that we're going to be quarantined at some time. Um, and that many people are going to be put into situations where it's very sudden. It will not be announced. They take you off guard. They catch you off guard because that's when you'll easily be controlled, manipulated. If you had time to think something out, you'd act differently. But when you are operating in fear and chaos, you will do anything. As you can see with the guy who hit his wife off of him for 40 years, that's how panicked he was. So, uh, I felt led to share the dream with you. I want you to know this, that no matter what video I put out here coming up, my whole mission is always to have you give your life to Jesus Christ and understand that hell is truly a real place of eternal torment. Satan is real. So I pray, guys, that you uh, would give your lives to Jesus, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.